How will Chase Young and the Saints defense bounce back after neck procedure? Matt Muscana, after further review, I have, of course, some James Scramento. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about Chase Young and this neck surgery, this story coming out of nowhere. A lot of concern. A lot of people, especially those on the Saints subreddit, seem to think that Chase Young may have pulled a fast one on the Saints, that Chase Young may have hid his neck problem just to have surgery while signing a $13 million fully guaranteed deal. If you ask Adam Schefter, oops, turns out that's not the case either. We will talk about that in this video. Chase Young was introduced uh, to the media on Monday night. We learned right. while we were on air that the um, former number two overall pick agreed to terms with the New Orleans Saints. So he's there at the facility. They don't let him leave. He agrees to a contract. He signs it, meets with reporters, and look, said he's fired up to be yeah. in New Orleans Love as it. one Very would happy be. About it. Man, just excited to be a Saint, man. Um, you know, just excited to help this team. Uh, grateful, um, you know, um, for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, yeah, that, my plan yeah. is to make the most of it. And, uh, you know, help this no team problem. get to that one common goal. Yeah, the one. Love it. One common goal. We're unified. We want to win. Chase Young, new scenery, you know, a chance to kind of redeem himself, kind of get back some of that hype that was so big whenever he was taken second overall. Love every bit of it. Love it. Chase, welcome to New Orleans indeed. Common goal. Get back to the playoffs. Be really good. And look, we talked about it yesterday. We talked about it. Love the move to sign yeah. Chase Young for a lot of reasons. Super high ceiling. So right? High. Guy, Wiz Khalifa levels of high. Why are you screaming at me, Matt? I don't understand what's going on here. Was a freak show at Ohio State. The number two overall pick in the draft went to Washington. Productive as a rookie. Yeah, was good. Played in all but one game. Yeah. Had seven and a half sacks, 10 rookie TFLs. The then the injury bug hit last year. Part of the season in Washington. Part of the season in San Francisco. And Hold on now. Last year, he wasn't hurt, right? Last year believe he played, what, 15, 16 games? So, you know, it, we are quick to label a player injury prone. We are quick to label players, especially if the... Here's what I'll say to, to that. If it's the same injury over and over and over again, okay, yeah, sure, he's injury prone. If it's unrelated injuries or... You know, I, I, all I'm saying is he, I'm hesitant to just drop that a player's injury riddled. And now his rookie deal's up. He's a free agent. Hey, look. High, high, high yes, ceiling. very high. Low risk. One-year proven deal. Of yeah. course you want to bring in Chase Young. Why wouldn't you bring in Chase Young? I love bringing in Chase Young. And we learned the Saints are giving him a $13 million deal. One year, $13 million. Big asterisk on that one. So it was originally reported $13 million guaranteed deal which when it came out in the video that i did i said it probably wasn't fully guaranteed it probably was you know incentive laden and all of this like who knows what he'd actually get well it turns out it was way more incentive laden than i thought it the i don't have the numbers in front of me the base salary is like two million dollars the signing bonus is like 1.8 million dollars everything else is a per game base like a per game incentive basis he has to play games he has to make the roster in order to get the money it's even less risk than i thought it's 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 somehow a even better deal to sign chase young which goes to the point that i always make these contracts i'm telling y'all when you see blank team signs blank player for 10 years and 100 million dollars that's just a headline you're not seeing the hundreds of pages of documents, the legal terminology. You're, you have no idea the bonuses, the incentive structure, how it's all done. I'm dealing with explaining this to these Char Chargers fans who are skewering me for the Justin Herbert, uh, J.J. McCarthy video. And all these Charger fans, first of all, again, I didn't even know there was Chargers fans, much less 6,000 of them that are in my comment section every single day. They keep telling me, the Chargers have this huge cap hit. The Chargers have this huge Justin Herbert, $250 million. And then you go look at the deal. Justin Herbert has barely been paid any of the deal. If the Chargers wanted to, they could restructure, if Justin Herbert waived his no-trade clause, could restructure to where they basically wouldn't have to pay him anything. 
because the bonuses and all of that haven't been sent, haven't been paid. Thus, you can kind of move that around. All the only reason I bring that up is because even a deal that big, even a deal with those kind of numbers, you know, ten years, two hundred fifty million dollars, franchise quarterback, guaranteed this, even that kind of a deal can be moved around and played with and the verbiage and whatever to where it's barely nothing. Cliff Kingsbury signed a 10-year, 100-something million dollar deal. Eight months later, he was fired from the Cardinals. Has anyone talked about those where, where that money is? Has anyone talked about if Cliff is getting paid? Is anybody talking about will the Cardinals be able to play on Sundays or will they, or will they be too busy paying Cliff Kingsbury? No one cares. Why? Because it's all, it's all fugazi. I'm telling you, all these contracts, these numbers, the salary, all of this is just fugazi. If you're worried about a one-year Chase Young deal and you're sitting there saying, like, ah, oh, we paid him too much. Ah, oh, it's going to bankrupt the franchise. It's not. It's not. And that was a $13 million deal. The contract now is so much smaller. It's, it's basically a minimum. We've basically paid him, like, a minimum contract with all of these bonuses. And don't forget bonuses are something that can get moved around. Bonuses can get paid. It can get paid next year. It can get paid this year. It can get paid all at once. It can get paid over the lifetime of the contract. A lot of things can happen. Not to mention, you can then restructure the deal. If they wanted to, they could say, hey, Chase, you're playing great. Eight games in, boom, bada bing, bada boom. We're going to turn this one-year deal into a four-year deal, and we're going to move everything around again. That's fantastic. It's exactly what we thought it would be. It's a prove it deal. Yeah, you're going to compensate him, but really what he wants is long-term security and yet a guarantee the 13 mil, and I'm fine with that. So, yeah, look, Chase Young talked about why he picked the New Orleans Saints when the Panthers and Titans were all so interested. Well, <laughs> I know why, because the Panthers are ass. I wouldn't want to go to the, I wouldn't want to go to Carolina either. Just a culture, man, uh, just a tradition, um, you know, just a uh, Saint, it's one of those, um, places that uh you know a winning culture um and you yeah. know that's what uh, that that's what weeks. i wanted to um you know be around yeah well, and good, uh, you're here. you know i feel like this was a place for me culture yes, and agreed. tradition yes that winning culture that tradition yes also the 13 million guaranteed and that actually wasn't guaranteed is a tough look i mean i'm not i'm not gonna lie to anybody this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough look okay Look, I hate, I listen, <clears throat> guys, I hate to be the one to tell y'all Santa Claus isn't real, okay? But Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport and all these talking heads on ESPN and Fox Sports and NFL.com that you see on Twitter, they don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. If Adam Schefter's telling you it's $13 million guaranteed, do a little extra research. Go find the actual people who know what's going on and then see what the number is. If you go to ESPN.com and you just take that headline and you say, all right, this might as well be you know, Deuteronomy 23.7 because this is, this is gospel. This, this is gospel right here. This is factual. Adam Schefter said it. it's on ESPN.com. No doubt about it. 100%. It's got to be real. Guys, I'm telling you. It's, it, it, it's just not okay it's just bottom line it's not mel kuyper what he says about the draft mel kuyper told me and everybody else that justin fields was going to get traded for the first uh, for a first round pick at one point mel kuyper said that justin fields was going to get traded to atlanta for the eighth overall pick he got traded for a sixth and did we mention he's having neck surgery Adam Schefter. Oh, how did I know? How, <laughs> how did I know, Adam? So the neck surgery thing, not a big deal at all. This is like if I bought a house, okay? If I bought a house and I, and I you know, buy the house and I talk to the realtor and, I, and they tell me, hey, look, you probably are going to have to redo the tile in the bathroom. And I say, okay, no problem. Cool. I'm good with it. It's still a deal. I still want to move, you know, all, all that. And I buy the house. And then a week later, I tell somebody, yep, I'm uh, having to retile the bathroom. And, they, and they'd be absolutely stunned. You know, it's like, whoa, 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 no, no, no. I knew I knew about it ahead of time. I knew about it ahead of time. Still bought the house. I'm just now doing the tile thing that I knew was going to happen. No big deal. No biggie. That's what the, you think. Do y'all think 
Do y'all think for a second that Chase Young, what, what do y'all think? He walked around like this? Hey, Chase, look over here. Hey, hey Chase. Oh, I can't. Hey, Chase, look over here. And, and y'all think he just never turned his neck? Do y'all think he just hit it? What do, what do you wear, a turtleneck sweater? Did he wear a turtleneck sweater the entire time? No one asked him to turn his head. Y'all don't think they have a medical staff? Y'all don't think the Saints... Y'all think... Y'all think the Saints would sign this cat without doing any kind of medical, any kind of anything, and then the day after, Chase Young is going to call up Mickey Loomis and say, hey, Mickey, by the way... I, oh, Mickey, are you watching the James Comet Madden franchise? Is that what you're watching? Oh, my God. There's, there's an episode every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday? Wow. That's unbelievable. What oh, the regular season finale just happened? They're about to plug the playoffs. That's unreal. Can you send me the link? The other, you think Chase Young called Mickey Loomis and said that, but then also said, "Oh, hey, by the way, I don't don't want to interrupt your viewing experience of James Scametta, but I have to have neck surgery." Okay, bye. Is that what y'all think happened? Wake up, wake up. Okay, the Saints obviously knew this was going to happen. The Saints obviously knew there was a neck issue. The Saints obviously were okay with it. The Saints went through, made this contract that's not $13 million guaranteed, put in all of these roster these roster incentives, laid in the entire contract with that, and then said, okay, cool, you'll have neck surgery. Perfect. Like, in what universe? Honestly. In what universe does anybody think that Chase Young would sign this contract for, <laughs> for $13 million guaranteed and then the next day drive himself to Oshner in downtown New Orleans, drive himself to Oshner, check himself in, and say, hey, y'all have any uh, y'all have a special on neck surgeries? I'm just here to I'm here to see your latest deals on neck surgeries. I mean, damn, like, it just makes no sense, you know? It makes no sense to even believe that this could somehow be, like, pulling a fast one on the Saints. Chase Young, who signed a one-year $13 million deal with New Orleans today, is undergoing a neck procedure that is expected to sideline him into training camp. Per so... so Again, at, the Saints expect him to be ready for week one. The Saints expect this surgery to, be, to happen, to be fine, whatever, and then he'll be ready for week one. Cool. Not an issue. Sources. The expectation is that he'll return in time for the season. Yep. Teams were aware of the neck issue, and the Saints were comfortable moving ahead with it. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Let's unpack this. I already did. I did. First of all, if you're asking the question, why didn't San Francisco re-sign him? Remember, San Francisco sent a third-round pick to Washington for Chase Young seven games into the season. So San Francisco sent a third-round pick to Washington, and they got Chase Young for nine games and two sacks. Yep. Why wouldn't they try to re-sign him? Uh, that's probably a pretty good indication of why. Interesting. So there, there's a lot of... Now, look, there's a lot of deducing that you got to do to draw that up. So you have to deduce, one, that the injury happened in San Francisco. Because if you believe that the injury happened in Washington, then my response would be, well, then why did they trade for him? If they knew he was hurt, why would they trade for him, much less trade for a third? Or, I guess you could say, did Chase Young get hurt in Washington, hide it from San Francisco? Did San Francisco get get done by Washington? Did they get tricked by Washington? So, so then you could say, well, let's say they knew about it. If they traded a third, and the surgery wasn't going to be that that intensive to where he could have the surgery in the middle of March— and be back for for the you know first game of the season. Why wouldn't the Niners just let him do the surgery Im immediately after the season, day after the Super Bowl, have him go in for surgery? Then it would be a complete non-factor. Why didn't the Niners do this deal? A one year, you know, 
one-year deal. What I think the actual answer is, is that the 49ers have a different roster. What I think the actual answer is, I think the, the 49ers have different players. They have a different plan. They have a different scheme. They have different salary situations. They have a different vision. That's why. To, to try and act like the Niners didn't sign him because they knew about this neck surgery or this neck issue, guys, this isn't a debilitating neck. He's not Kurt Angle. This isn't a debilitating neck injury that, that is going to sideline him and change it, alter his career. Like This is something he's having done. He already had done by the time y'all see this video. He already had done, and he's expected to be there for week one. I mean, it's, it's it, the the fake outrage or God, if it's if it's real outrage, is it, it's even crazier. Now, <laughs> let's be very clear. There are a lot of players that miss off season workouts. Okay? Yeah, who cares? They miss off season workouts and they come back and they're fine. Yes. And Joe Burrow, his knee exploded. In November of his rookie season, he missed. Nobody cares about off-season workouts. Preseason, off-season, off-season workouts, OTAs, mandatory camp, whatever. No, none of that matters. All the off-season got back in time for the start of the season. This isn't the Junction Boys, all right. This is this isn't. Shout out to that old ESPN movie, The Junction Boys. Great movie. They're not doing like. It's it's not 1975. Uh, uh, actually, might have been that movie's probably way older than that. Actually, and had, not the movie, but the story. Had an All-Pro caliber year and took the Bengals to the Super Bowl. <clears throat> Drew Brees famously, when he signed with New Orleans, we all know the Dolphins <sighs> doctors wouldn't clear him. Saints did. Drew's told the stories he's written about in his book. He couldn't even fully throw throughout the preseason of that 2006 season, and we know the rest of the story there. Now you know the rest of the story. Thank you, Paul Harvey. And there's plenty of guys. I mean, look, remember that time Michael Thomas, you know, went astray and missed the entire offseason and showed back up for oh, that didn't work out so great. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, he ended up missing the entire season. Listen, I'm not trying to completely poo-poo the entire thing today. Okay. Should not be poo-pooed at all. There should be zero poo-poo. Zero. Empty diapers across the board. But if you can't honestly look at this situation and feel a smidge different than you did yesterday, then you're not being truthful with yourself. I mean, I was the guy, like, pounding the table yesterday. Don't let him out the building. Don't let him out the building. Don't let him out the building. You got to get Chase Young for all the reasons. High ceiling. Low risk, affordable, young guy, only played in 43 career games. You just got to get, you got to motivate it, prove it to you. Check, 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 check. All of it made a ton of sense. None of that changes. And now you learn that he's got to have neck surgery and that changes a little. Now I want to clarify. Ooh. Now I like, I like how he said that. Look at, look at this. Look at this look. I mean, this is a tender. This is a tender profile picture if I ever saw one. This is a fantastic... I, look, I mean... <laughs> I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you're... Uh, you know... I Look, I had uh, recently heard this week, by the way, I recently heard that we were being played. This is a true story. I recently heard that our videos were being played in a lift, L-Y-F-T, in a lift... In Omaha, Nebraska, okay? So the reach is out of control. But a lot of people listen in the car. If you're listening in the car, I implore you, pull over. Pull over to the shoulder. Pull over to a rest stop. Pull over wherever you got to pull over. Because we do promote safe driving on this channel. I mean, pull over wherever you got to pull over because there's a visual you need to see. Okay? Now what, <laughs> now, what I was saying before... Before the, we got derailed for a second there. Matt put it perfectly. He said whatever he said. And then he said, before you found out, before we found out that he had to have neck surgery. Exactly. That doesn't change anything. Because 
the team didn't find out when we found out. The do- the team doctors didn't find out when we find it, found out. The Oshner surgeons didn't find out when we found out. Who who knew ahead of time? The only people that matter, the, the Saints, Mickey Loomis, the team doctors, Chase Young, Dennis Allen, the head coach of the team, they all found out way way ahead of whenever we found out. So the the timeline, the outrage of the timeline, the outrage of like, well, I found you know I felt great about it when it when it was signed, but then I found out blank, so now I'm upset. Flip it, flip it then, because that's how the Saints were. The Saints knew before the contract was signed. So if you're excited about it and all that stuff, and you know this is happening ahead of time, just like the house, just like the house metaphor with the tile floor. If you buy a house and then you find out you have to retile the bathroom, that sucks. But if you understand you have to retile the bathroom, you're excited to buy the house, you sign the contract, and then you start retiling the bathroom, it doesn't change at all the excitement you felt signing the contract for the house because you already knew about the tile bathroom floor. The Saints already knew about this Chase Young thing. So if you're excited about, if you're excited or were excited when you heard Chase Young was signed, for $13 million, this news should not change your opinion at all because you have to trust that the team understood the situation, assessed the situation, and it will be fine. Again, even if you don't believe all that stuff, finding out that the contract is a like a three, $3 million deal pretty much versus a $13 million deal, that should balance out everything too. There's no reason... Zero reason to be outraged about this situation at all. One thing, and this is notable, Adam Schefter reports that Chase Young is undergoing a neck procedure. Yeah, and that's another thing, too. Guys, we ain't watching General Hospital. We aren't watching Grey's Anatomy, okay? Do y'all think that a a serious career-threatening like serious implication neck surgery could take place. And then that player could play on, on the week one. No, this would be a whole different situation. If, if it was Chase Young having neck surgery, we'll sideline him for six months. Hopefully he'll play this season. Then it's like, okay, well, this is a pretty serious procedure. This it's March. We're talking about April, May, June, July. So we're talking about four months. We're talking about like four months of like recoup time before then he can get up to speed to where he's basically ready to roll. Okay, sure. Whatever. And in medical... And you know, honestly, I think the word neck is what's throwing people off. Because if this was Chase Young having hand surgery, he's expected to, whatever, miss some training camp, but he'll be ready for the season. I don't think anybody would care. People would think, okay, cool, get get whatever taken care of, and let's be ready for the season. But because it's neck, people are thinking, oh, it must be serious. Even though the timeline is telling you it's not that serious. In medical terms, there is a difference between a procedure and surgery, okay? So I'm curious the extent. Like, surgery involves cutting. A procedure can be anything yeah, medical scope. in nature. A, yeah. a procedure could be... Injections. Yeah. May, maybe. I, I do not know. This is a total hypothetical, right? Let me not even say Chase Young. If I were to go get stem cells injected into my knee for knee pain, that's a procedure. I didn't have surgery at a procedure. So maybe it's something along those lines. Don't I do not know. And maybe that's semantics and Schefter didn't report it properly there. Don't know. And he didn't report nothing properly. He reported it was $13 million guaranteed. Again, guys, there are people who know more than Adam Schefter, Mel Kuyper, Ian Rappaport, and whoever whoever the, the current person on ESPN on the sideline is. Those are paid actors. Those are just, They're just characters. We live in a society where there's legit beat writers for each team. There are people, I hate to always bring this up, but there are, <laughs> there are like very in-the-know gambling groups out there with certain people in on those groups or in those groups on social media who are available to tell you the, the deal. Quit relying. I'm begging you. Qu- 
quit relying on ESPN push notifications for this kind of news. Quit relying on Field Yates and Mel Kuyper to tell you about what teams want to do in the draft. If I, I, might, I might make a full video on who to follow on Twitter, who, what podcasts to listen to, what videos. What, I, I might do like a resource packet because we got to get, we got to be done with, you know, Chris Sims telling me the, the, the ins and outs of, of, a, of a contract. Oh, that's my hope is that it's not something as severe. Like I say, we're just going to give obviously, you this procedure, let it rest. It's obvious. I mean, Dan, this is like reading comprehension 101. It's obviously not that serious if, if he's expected to play in week one. It's simple math. Simple math says if he's ready to play in week one, thus the neck procedure cannot be that serious. That's the, the offseason. We'll see you in training camp. We'll see how it goes. Look, my optimism is there for Chase Young for all the reasons I said on Monday. I mean, you have a guy that's 24 years old in his physical prime. The two seasons he stayed healthy in the NFL, he's... <laughs> it is kind of funny. I mean, it, it, it is kind of funny, right? That we just heard seven minutes of neck surgery, neck this, injury riddled, whatever. And then he comes back with... He's in his physical prime. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is kind of ironic, right? It's kind of funny. Like, he's obviously not in his physical prime. He's, he's, he's on the way to having neck surgery. Damn, that's the whole point of neck surgery is to get back to the physical prime. He's been a productive player. He's at a position of need. It clears the deck a little bit in the draft because you signed Chase Young. You're certainly not looking for an edge rusher at 14. Well, you could. If the right one falls, you certainly could. You're not looking for lot two or Dallas Turner. You could, yeah. If they fall, if, if Turner falls, or you know, maybe now you trade down to get lot two, or it does it doesn't mean you don't draft one now? It just gives you a little flexibility. Turner or one of the edge got Jared Verse at fourteen. So, so for a lot of reasons, this makes sense. And I don't even mind the thirteen million dollars. Hey, look, which yeah, you know, it ain't my money, but I'm just talking from a cap perspective. The Saints went into this with about sixteen and a half million dollars free to spend. Still got. What if I told you it was three million? What if I told you it was three million with an incentive-based situation? And a lot of you are going to say, "Oh, Matt didn't know that." Exactly, because he went on Adam Schefter's report. takes takes me twenty minutes. Go do a little digging, do a little check, a couple sources, check a couple. Oh, here's the actual deal. Got to sign your draft pick, so you got work to do. <clears throat> but I don't even care that they gave Chase Young thirteen million guaranteed. It ain't my like if you're sitting there watching PTI, you know, if you're sitting there watching PTI and you're like taking your notes, and you're like, oh, Tony Kornheiser said it was third one year, thirteen million dollars. Okay, I got to what, what did Michael Wilbon say? Michael Wilbon said, okay, 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 all right, cool. I've got the information. Like if you're getting your information from Tony Kornheiser or Michael Wilbon, yeah, sure. I, I can see where you think it's thirteen million guaranteed. My money. And they'll figure it out with the cap however they got to. For a one-year player you hope produces and signs a long-term deal, it's worth it. For the potential re for the potential reward. But if you were realistically looking across the hall at San Francisco and going, why didn't they resign him? This could be the reason. Couldn't you also say, why, why did they trade for him? Yeah, obviously. So there has to be at least... Unless you believe he... Again... Unless you believe he was hurt in San Francisco. But then if he was hurt in San Francisco, you have to wonder, okay, why did they rely on him in the Super Bowl? A lot of questions. A lot of questions that poke hole in, holes in that idea that San Francisco did not sign him because of the neck injury. Some Could have been so many other reasons. Trepidation, some skepticism, some, some, some valid questioning. I don't think so. About what Chase Young's ceiling and ability will be this year if he's got this neck issue. No. No. Because all of those questions and tepidation and whatever, all of that was eliminated by the team. The team should have had the trepidation and the, ah, eh, maybe not, ah, eh, maybe I shouldn't do this, ah, eh, maybe we shouldn't sign them, ah, eh, let's do the medical checks, let's do all that. Once they said, okay, checks out, cool, procedure's no problem, we'll be good to go, let's offer them this deal with these. Once they did that, all of our concerns should be over.
That's what I'm saying. He it's flipped, and and it's normal as a fan to feel like the team is finding things out when you are, but it is inverse when it comes to contracts and trades and all that. All of these concerns, all of these worries, all of these whatever, the team has already handled that. The team has already done the checks. The team has already done the medicals. The team has already done all of that. So you should feel fine. I mean, obviously it might not work out, like, but you know, I mean, who knows? He could re-injure himself four games in. Like, It is what it is. But all of the concerns of like, this specific moment in time, this specific procedure and, all, procedure and all that, the team has already done the due diligence. So now you have to trust that that was good, that that was done and it was okay and we're moving on. That potentially lingers into training camp and beyond. Chase Young is officially a member of the Saints. He is a he's signed, sealed, and delivered. $13 million, fully guaranteed. But we're going to have to wait a little while if we see him in the black and gold. He's undergoing a neck procedure and they hope to have him ready for training camp. Hey. Well, We'll have to wait a little while to see him in the black and gold. What? Like, he may potentially... We, we may have to wait what? Z- like zero, zero hours? As of right now, we're going to see him week one just like we would have before. Unless you're, you know, hanging out at... I don't even know where, on an airline watching watching practices or something. But, yeah, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, look. First of all, I feel like I was on fire in this video. I feel like this was a 10 out of 10 performance. Get on down in the comments below if you made it to the end. I want hundreds of comments. I want to be down there. I want to be engaged. I want to be talking back and forth. I want to be replying. I, I, want, to, I want to be reading comments all day, all night on this video. Get on down there. Get involved. Shout out to Omaha, Nebraska. Shout out to the Lyft drivers out there doing God's work. Omaha, Nebraska. I mean, you talk about the reach. Downtown New Orleans. Omaha, Nebraska, you know, truckers in, in Shreveport doing the Lord's work. I love it. That makes my day. Makes my day. Get on down in the comments below. Tell me what you think. And if you if you got if you're sitting here thinking, James, you want me to add a comment to this? This was already ten out of ten. I'm not adding a comment to this. It's fantastic. I'm I'm standing up and applauding. If that's the case, get on down there anyways and tell me where you listen, where you watch from. Do you watch at work? Do you watch during dinner? Do you watch on YouTube? Do you listen to the show? Get on down there. Let me know. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.